Hey art fans, Jesse with the Wandering Manus channel and today I'm going to give you a breakdown and a little review on my visit to Vincent, the Van Gogh interactive experience in Las Vegas, Nevada. Stand by, you won't want to miss it. A show that's sweeping the art world is the Van Gogh Immersive Experience. With over 20 different locations available worldwide, I visited the one at the Crystals Mall in front of the Aria Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. If you've never been to the Crystals Mall, it is one heck of an experience in and of itself. It's in front of the Aria, which of course is a really high-end hotel and casino, and this is a very high-end mall. With all the top line stores, you definitely can do quite a bit of window shopping. And if you have about three to $5,000, you could probably pick up at least one item. I wish I was joking, but I did see a pair of designer Crocs for about $800. That's right, designer Crocs. The mall also had a Barbie museum, which was very limited engagement. Check out my video linked below. Once you get up to the exhibit, you're greeted with a really Van Gogh style entrance, which is pretty cool, and the title of the show, Vincent. The tickets were around $40 for an adult and about $60 for some additional VR experience, which I didn't do. So you need to be the judge on whether it's worth it or not for this 30-minute exhibit. Once inside, you pick a spot to sit or stand, and you become one with the art. Using over 15,000 square feet of video screens, both on the floor and on the walls, including mirrors, Van Gogh is never going to be the same for you. The art literally crawls and walks to some really beautiful and really powerful music. It is quite a show. Vincent Van Gogh, one of the most well-known post-impressionist artists, was born in Groot Zundert, Holland on March 30th of 1853. The son of a pastor, he was brought up in a religious and cultured atmosphere. Van Gogh was highly emotional, lacked self-confidence, and struggled with his identity and with direction. Something I find interesting is that he spent most of his life preparing to become a preacher. It was only the last 10 years or so of his life that he decided to really put his work into art. With that career just spanning a little over a decade, he produced an astonishing 1,000 drawings, 160 watercolors, 9 lithographs, an etching, and over 900 paintings. Van Gogh started his art study career in Belgium, and you'll see his very early period, which is known as the Dutch, early Dutch period. They're somber toned, sharply lit genre paintings, which most of which is famous as the Potato Eaters in 1885. In 1886, Van Gogh went to Paris to join his brother, who was the manager of a gallery. In Paris, he studied with Corman and inevitably met Bissarro and Monet. Having met these new Impressionist painters, he tried to imitate their techniques and began to lighten his very dark palette to paint in the short brush strokes of the Impressionist style. He was unable to successfully copy that style and developed his own bold and unconventional one. In 1888, Van Gogh went south to Arles, France, where he hoped his friends would join him to collaborate on works of art. His friend and infamous painter, Paul Gauguin, did join him, but with disastrous results. Van Gogh had a very nervous temperament and made him a difficult companion. Near the end of 1888, an incident led Gauguin to ultimately leave the city. Van Gogh had pursued him with an open razor and was stopped by Gauguin, resulting in the quite famous incident in which a portion of his earlobe was removed.
Van Gogh began to alternate between fits of madness and lucidity and was sent to an asylum in St. Remy for treatment. In May of 1890, after a couple years at the asylum, he seemed to be better and went and stayed under the watchful eye of Dr. Gachet. Two months later, he died from what was believed to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound, ending his brief and wonderful career. The perfect example of the term starving artist, as he was not very successful during his actual lifetime. Apparently he sold only one painting, lived mostly in poverty, was malnourished and overworked. The money he had was supplied by his brother and was used primarily for art supplies, coffee, and cigarettes. Despite that lack of success during his lifetime, Vincent van Gogh's legacy lives on, having left a lasting impact on the world of art. Van Gogh is now viewed as one of the most influential artists, having helped lay the foundations of modern art. Van Gogh's probably most infamous painting, Starry Night, is estimated as of 2021 to be worth over $100 million. The Vincent van Gogh Museum, which is located in Amsterdam, has an online experience that I would also recommend you go check out. They have a 4K video tour of the potato eaters and the entire Van Gogh collection that they have available online to look. So I mentioned the ticket prices being a little steep, but considering what went into it and the fact that this is a limited engagement experience, if you have the opportunity to see this show before it goes away, I personally would recommend you do so. The show's website, VanGoExpo.com, has all the site and ticket information, depending on which city you're visiting. It does have quite an extensive list that is closing up as time goes on. If you still have money left over from the expensive Crocs you bought, be sure to check out their gift shop. It was pretty neat had quite a bit of unique items. Hey, I hope you really enjoyed this video about Las Vegas travel. If you did, be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, be sure to leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. This is Jesse with The Wandering Mandis, and until next time, signing off.